Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips. My conveyor chain quit working. You've been in the field and everything was fine. Suddenly, you quit spreading. What happened? Bet you felt the F word, furious. We will solve the problem methodically by going through several possibilities. First, check your bed chain. Check the clearance over the frame underneath. It should be about four inches, and although there may be some sagging to one side, that is not a problem. However, make sure it is not wrapped around your rear roller. If your chain is too loose, it may wrap or break as it drags across the frame supports. Bouncing through the field generates a lot of vibration. Make sure the hydraulic ends are plugged in both the tractor and the spreader securely. Visually inspect and check all hoses and cables. Have the connections jiggled loose from vibration? Check all connections at the spreader and inside at the controller. If your spreader cuts on then off randomly, a loose connection or a short in a cable is a real possibility. These are frustrating because there is no pattern to the problem. Checking the connections is the easiest and the cheapest thing you can do. Okay, a lot of problems we have in the field. The drivers driving one down through a rough field and bouncing up and down. The most common cause a lot of time is this cable got so much tension on the fitting, the plugs where it plugs to the controller that they work those loose and when you hit a, butt, a rut it cuts off then it comes back on. What you need to do is pull this cable from, from the floor up, take the pressure off the fittings and with a tie, tie it up here like we got right here and make sure that then you won't have no pulling on the console cables and therefore you'll have a much better in the field jumping around, beating around. So that's why we have some problem with the fittings working loose and once you hit it, it lose power then it comes back on when you fit in a good clear flat and so always put it up there a little, make slack in the cable that plugs to the controller then eliminate some of your problem. Uh, down the road. That's just a little technical tip we throw in. Did these steps fix your problem? Another easy fix is the PWM valve. The PWM regulates the amount of hydraulic fluid that flows from the tractor to the motors that turn your rear roller, thus rotating your conveyor chain. PWM valves have a rating. 15 gallons per minute on most NCI spreaders. If this valve is overworked, it may overheat. This usually does not damage the valve, but overheating may cause the valve to lock up temporarily. Wait for the valve to cool and adjust the amount of hydraulic fluid coming from your tractor. Okay, it's time to check and see if we have fixed our problem. No, it's time to check your hydraulic flow. Okay, we didn't check everything from the hydraulics up front on your your tractor or your truck. It work. You're running it on. The uh, now we're getting to a point where the conveyor still won't come on. We didn't check the PWM valve, but there's one thing that each one, each farmer maybe needs to invest in a flow meter. You can come off the control flow. And hooked to the inside of the flow meter, it's got in and out here. It's got the gallon per minute and the PSI. And once you connect it, take the control flow hose off and connect it, and it goes to the B at the back. Then turn it on. And if you got gallons per minute coming out, that means it's hydraulic oil going through the PWM. Okay, while we're right here at this stage, if you had a needle valve right here, you can crank, crank the needle valve clockwise. And as you go in, you'll see pressure reading right here. This is a 2500 pressure relief. Once you go in and you run it up, if that thing pops off and say 14 or 1500 on the conveyor side, it's not going to, you won't be able to spread nothing real heavy. So, need to change the flow control, I mean, the uh, pressure relief to a 25 for the conveyor. 
So as you go on down, if it goes to say 23, 24, 25, then you can go counterclockwise all the way back out. Everything is okay. But with a flow control valve, you can check everything quicker and almost pinpoint where the problem's at, the front or the rear. Grab your tools. Now examine the rear roller motor and gearbox. We didn't check everything we need to do at the PWM. The pressure relief's okay. Control flow is right. It's hooked up to the motor on the B port on the motor, so everything is good. Take, we're going to take the two three-quarter half-inch bolts out of the motor and set them down and, and remove it from the gearbox. Look at the shaft real good. Make sure there's no crack or the shaft is completely broken or the key is shared. If everything looks good, uh, then you lay your motor on the on the gear top of the gearbox and hold on to it and it's not going to be a hard jar or nothing. And tell him to turn the conveyor switch on and that motor should start turning. If it's turning then, we know we got to go further, check into the gearbox or on the shaft. So it looks good here. So you take this, leave it out, and then to remove the gearbox, what we got to do is take this three quarter inch bolt Remove this three-quarter inch bolt. It's the stabilizer bar here that holds the gearbox from flipping over. So once you remove that, and then right here you got to take a wrench and remove this plug. Take it out. Then you got a, an Allen screw up inside this gearbox. What you want to do is take a T-handle Allen wrench and remove remove this set screw. That's what holds the gearbox on the shaft. Once you get it out. Once you get that out, then you can, should be able to take the gearbox and work it out. You might have to have a, a wood or two before or a piece of metal, it depends on how long it's been on there. Then just pull it out, off box, off from the roller. You look at your shaft, the key on your rear roller, make sure it's not cracked or broke or loose. I have seen them shear off here. But, in other words, if the roller looks good, the key slot still looks real good. Once you pull your gearbox off, look inside your gearbox, and you got a half inch key, and it should be fit, fitted in the slot. Depends on where you pull it off. It might have fell out. But make sure it's down in the slot. It's not sheared off. And once you do that, if that's okay, you put it back on. Sometimes these keys will, will come out, you put one on, and it falls back up into the inside, and it you think it's no good or something, but the key's not in the slot. So make sure when you put it on that the key is in the slot, and once you get it on there, try to turn your roller. You should be able to turn the gearbox and the roller. If it's not, you got to take the box back off and reinsert the key in the slot. So make sure that's cautious to do that. And once you do that and find out the problem, it could be that if it doesn't come on in, and once you put your key back in, it could be a gear in your gearbox itself. So that's where you have to have it. Send it back to the manufacturer or get another one or let them, someone tear it apart and check it. But other than that, uh, you should, this right here should solve your problem and get it going back once you determine everything is okay. According to Linwood, this information should diagnose 99% of all bed chain problems. And if anyone knows spreaders, it is Linwood. He has been with Newton Crouch for 47 years. Our goal is to get you working again as quickly as possible. NCI keeps detailed information as manufactured on all our spreaders. Newton Crouch sells all the parts necessary to repair or maintain your spreader. Newton Crouch has three locations. Choose the location nearest you for quickest delivery. Proudly made in America, a family-owned business since 1940.
Newton Crouching.